Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Larson. It's February and love is in the air with Valentine's Day, but how's your libido? Libido is one of those things that um, people sometimes hesitate bringing up, but um, it's something that um, is on the minds of a lot of people. And there's a lot of different things that really influence libido. And um, it's not quite as simple as maybe some other conditions. And it's something that is, there's kind of a lot of variables that are really influenced that kind of have to come together to give a person the right libido. So when, you know, I strike the right kind of relationship with a the patient, they're comfortable about bringing that sort of thing up. It's, uh, it's actually pretty common. It's a common issue that a lot of people deal with and they don't really know what questions to ask. They don't know how to really seek the right answers. So uh, let's go to the board over here and let's talk a little bit about some, uh, a few things about libido. So libido is basically sexual desire. And there's a whole bunch of things that we have to consider when there's symptoms with um, low libido. Um, so there's a few things that, are, that a lot of people think of. Obviously, we think about hormones and things like that. And I'll get to that in just a moment. But let's first talk about some things that you're probably not really hearing when it comes to libido. Let's actually start over here. So kind of the things in red are things that kind of negatively influence libido and things that are in green have a more positive influence on, on libido. And then things that have kind of mixed colors that they kind of get, can go, you know, either way. So let's just talk way over here on medications. So there's a whole variety of medications that if you look up adverse effects of these medications, they influence libido. It's like right there, you know, um, you can look it up. You can just Google the medication that you're taking. You can see the adverse effects and effect on libido is a pretty common problem with some medications. So we have all this other stuff to think about, but if there's a medication that's affecting a person's libido, we can do all this stuff and it might not matter because the medic, because it's coming from a medication. So that's like kind of the first thing that you want to think about. Are you taking any medications that could be influencing your libido? We know that stress is a big one. And these are some things that people don't, you know, maybe directly correlate with libido, but we know that stress affects your adrenal hormones. Your adrenal hormones can affect pretty much all the other hormones in your body, including the uh, reproductive hormones like testosterone and estrogen. But here's some other ones over here that are not thought about when it comes to libido, but they're super key. Caffeine, smoking, and alcohol. So smoking, I mean, really, people, if you're still smoking, Come on, that's like so 1990s. You gotta be like done with smoking. So that is just, that's a super easy one that everybody hopefully gets. But caffeine and alcohol are a little bit less understood how they really influence libido. What they really come down to is both caffeine and alcohol have a really direct influence on your sleep. So if your sleep is bad, your libido is probably not gonna be very good. If you have really good sleep, that's a big check in the column of being helpful for your libido. So really, Optimize your sleep by checking your intake of caffeine and alcohol. Um, diet has a really significant effect, for better or worse. If you're eating foods that are high in sugar, processed grains, seed oils, like if there's corn oil and you know canola oil and cottonseed oil in your foods, that stuff's really inflammatory for your system. Inflammation, we have inflammation down here under labs. We know that inflammation is just kind of killer of the libido. Um, but on the flip side, if you have a good diet, a good anti-inflammatory diet, you're choosing good whole foods, good healthy sources of animal proteins, a whole broad variety of vegetables and berries and stuff like that, then uh, that can have a really positive influence on your diet. Um, we know body weight can have a significant influence. People with normal body weight, a kind of, let's say, ideal body weight for, for them individually, that can have a really positive influence. And really what it comes down to is VAT, visceral, adipose tissue, that's belly fat. We know that if there's more belly fat, that's kind of a metabolic organ of inflammation production. And that could influence things like your hormones, general inflammation of the body, and that could have a direct influence on your libido. So you can already see it's pretty complex. It's not as simple as like taking some supplement, like all of a sudden your libido is gonna be better. All this stuff has to, has to be taken into consideration. And if somebody really wants to do the work and they're really eager to influence or libido, all these things have to be thought about, which is why we have to take a really individual approach with most people. And if I had like the perfect protocol for every person, I would just give that to everybody and say, 
this is going to help your libido, but this stuff has to be individualized. And that's really when it comes over to things like your labs. So there's multiple things that we look at every single time when we run some of these labs, things like blood sugar and insulin, how's your blood pressure, hormones, lipids, just like your cholesterol, triglycerides, homocysteine, and these sort of inflammatory markers. When they're good, that's a super big bonus for your uh, libido. When these things are off, this is really where the nuts and bolts get uh, when it comes to libido. These are the things that we spend a lot of time on working on. And if these things are imbalanced, out of balance, it's oftentimes these things over here that we really have to emphasize to help balance these things. But we gotta take the guesswork out. We have to evaluate these labs so that we can be more of a sharpshooter with what kind of changes that we're gonna make instead of just shotgunning it and hoping something works. Um, we know that there's a, a mind-body effect to libido. We know that, like, how's your relationship with your significant other? If there's relationship is issues, that's gonna have direct influence on your libido. And then exercise kind of, you know, we know exercise and diet are always just kind of foundational to general health anyhow. And when the body's healthy, typically there's gonna be good libido. But as you can see, it's a multifactorial kind of thing. And it's something that um, we're good at dealing with, especially naturopathic physicians. We look, we take a deep dive with people in kind of an individual way. So if your doctor doesn't, you know, run these kind of labs, or if, you know, certain things are just not considered, then they're just, you're just not getting the full approach. It's a lot more nuanced than just, hey, here, take some testosterone, your libido is going to be better. Just to be clear, testosterone is super key, and sometimes we have to do things to directly boost up testosterone. But as you can see, it's, it's much more nuanced. There's a lot more uh, things that we have to really consider for libido. So in the month of February, it's a great time. If, if uh, libido is you know, a problem uh, in your situation, then really take a concerted effort to find out what's going on so we can support those things. And here's the thing. When your libido improves, you're going to find that other things in your health uh, improve as well because the things that you have to do to make your libido good is also going to be good for kind of general health and wellness as well. So hopefully uh, I answered some questions for you and uh, don't hesitate to uh, give us a call if you have any questions.